I'm about to once it goes live. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh huh. Hello, everybody. Let's see. Let's make sure we are live. And no, it does not seem like I am. Refresh. I'm going to go. I'm looking too. Uh huh. Okay. Sam, we are there. Let's see here. Yes, there we are. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ying Meets Yang of Gaming, episode number two. This week, our topic is gamer diversity, and I have a special guest here. This is my friend, Rome Rush. I put a link in our description to his YouTube channel if you guys want to check him out. We also have my co-host here, Project Storm. How is everybody this wonderful Sunday evening? Doing, doing pretty well. good. Oh, yeah, Real good well. out here. Can't wait to jump into the topic. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure Rome is <laughs> just as excited as I am to jump Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and um, we need to pick a game that I'll be playing while we talk also. Um, I have I just need to tell you. Hello, Peach. How are you doing? Anybody in the chat watching this uh, between today, which is August 30th, and September the 3rd, Nintendo Switch has on sale the Sinking City, which is normally the bundle is $64.99, but they have it on sale for $16.24. And right now, due to some huge legal battle, the Switch is the only platform you can get it on right now. So, guys, topic this week is gamer diversity. Let's wait a little bit to see if any more people come in. I'm going to get you that link. And let's see here. I'm going to share it out real quick. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Please share it. Let's see here. You will look in your uh, Twitter room. Okay. Cool. There it is. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. We might have share it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are perfectly fine. <laughs> Let's see. So much to do, so much to do, so little time to do it all in. That's how it is. That's why we always say, made, hey, the sauce is being made, man. You know, Moss is always saying that. So, uh, I mean, hey, sometimes you got to do it. Yes. Oh. Yes. And what is that? I'll check it in a second. Okay, let's see. And tweet. There we go. Close that. And. Lord, I swear. I am not that computer literate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Am I okay on your end for the stream, guys? Oh, yeah. I see it on YouTube coming through. All right. So, yeah, so, this topic this week, as I was saying, is gamer diversity. And everybody's probably wondering why this topic came up. Actually, Rome here gave me the idea for a topic a couple weeks ago, actually. Uh, Rome has just recently... Well, Rome, what systems do you play on now? I primarily play on my PS4, but I always bounce around to my older systems like my um, PS3, Xbox 360, even every now and again, the Xbox One. Um, so I'm kind of all over the place, but primarily on the PS4. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how you gave me the idea for this topic was when you, you recently got a Switch, like within the last couple months. Right. And you yep. began to realize how diverse a lot of gamers are. 
Oh yeah. We're gonna oh, even yeah. get into some Stadia talk uh project. Hey, now we're talking. Okay, because <laughs> Rome actually has a couple questions about Stadia. All right. Oh, yeah. So because the thing is gamer diversity People don't realize that besides the types of games you play, the types of games you play will also determine what platforms you might play on. Ah, good stuff, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Primarily, like, as everybody knows, I mostly have a Switch. Mm -hmm. People come at me and say, why are you playing on Switch? You don't have Call of Duty. You don't have uh, Halo. You don't have things like that. The reason those type of games don't matter to me is because I can't play first-person shooters. Okay. So for me, the fact that those type of games are not on the Switch, that doesn't matter to me. Okay. Um, Project, do you have a suggestion for a game to play? Um, You know what? <laughs> I always want to <laughs> say Mario, but uh, I'm not going to say it this time. I'm, I think, you know what? Um, You picked a good one last week. Let me see. Let me go on the list real quick. Do you have that list up? Uh, I could, so I could, let's see. Yeah, right. If not, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, just, uh, just. Oh, wait a minute. I can go over here and let you look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the sad part about the whole thing. Um, I can tell you. You know, civilization. These three are visual novels. Uh, this is, you remember on Scram Punks when I was, you were asking me what game was I playing? Yep. That was a point and click game. A lot, okay. all of these are point and click games. Yeah, these are let's visual. get a new, let's get a new point and click one. You know what I'm saying? Because see, uh, these are games that I would never try. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So I would like to see some of that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, um, last time you saw me playing Greed, uh, Path of Sin which Uh was this one. Um, So uh, Modern Tales here, that one's a very good one. Nightmares of the Deep is a very good one. Um, Noir Chronicles is also a very good one. Uncharted Tides is good. Oh, hey, let's see that one. Let's see some of that. I've never seen it. Okay. I've never seen it. All right, so... um, and this is a game that's easy for me to play and talk with. My mom actually loves watching I can't me mean play these alive. type of games. Neither can I, my friend. And let me I missed you, you talk at the same but time. I can't stay <laughs> for long. That's you know what I'm saying? Wrong. She, <laughs> she's <laughs> getting worse. Her life depends on me. Will you ever be back? Yo, same with me. Man. I can't I'm promise no anything. Streams all the time. But if I, if I ever I try to get in the top 100, you'll know. I actually make it the top 100 on that. Take care of Crazy Joe. I'm not streaming that. I'm trying to talk to people. I can't focus on what I'm doing. I'm not taking these downs, man. So, <laughs> exactly. I can't oh, and money, that's another thing. Money, thing the two of you have in common. You yeah. both actually like sports games. I love it. Oh, yeah, we got a swap gotcha. gamer tags, bro. Oh, so, yeah, we got to. I already subbed, you know what I'm saying, and all that. Oh, and I've been seeing you, you on Twitter and all that, man. You know, I know. I definitely been paying attention to what you're doing. I've seen the PS4. I've seen the PS4 discussion you had. I don't know if that was. Yeah, yeah. It was, I think it was around 11 the bar or somewhere like that. I don't know. Oh, but yeah, man. I'm a, I'm a diverse gamer, bro. And that's why we're here. Like, I don't. I don't. The only thing I discriminate on right now, I don't like to use the word discriminate, but man, I don't have the switch right now. But we'll get into that and the reason why I'm sure at some point in the show as as Bunny is uh as gonna that Bunny's gonna be rolling right through. Okay, so. cool. Cause I, I got some interesting stuff I gotta share with y'all too. Yes, uh, and see the one another reason I wanted to bring Rome on here is because he was a primarily a PlayStation 4 player. Oh, so you he have said, he said she can't she really can't hear us. Uh, uh, can't hear us. Oh man. Yeah, I don't know if she. Hey, Pete, just ask her. Is the game too loud? Well, or Jack, is it us? since we've proven ourselves useful, but here's the money as promised. Half now, yeah, half when we find my father. Pleasure doing business with you. Just the first thing I have when they come in is, "Yo, is everything good? The audio levels, all that." How's that? Is that better for you, Peach? All right, Jamal just joined. What's up, Jamal? I hope you can hear us. Hey, Jamal, Jamal. can you hear us? 
Let's see. Testing, testing. I cut the sound down on the game because this one did pop in kind of loud. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is that better for us? So they're not right there. See, we can't hear the game sound at all right now. Um, I can't hear it. I mean, I can't hear you playing the game, but, you know, I don't even care about the game sound because we're going to be we're going to be having a good discussion. All right. So Jamal say, yeah, I can hear you. OK. All right. OK. P said, yeah, the switch audio was a little high. OK, like high. cool. All right. So that's another reason I wanted to get the two of you together because Rome primarily played on his PlayStation 4 even though he had an Xbox. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he just went to the Switch, that makes you think, wow, what, what possessed him to go from something that was more powerful to something that's less powerful? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, and that's, that's the things that that's part of like the whole gamer diversity thing um so yeah so um we're going to be talking about that and so right now what is like so rome you're enjoying your switch right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what are you what are the points that you are enjoying about it you know what i think is the um it's actually the games first and foremost but I, it's the feel of the switch is different as far as like the i guess the rumbles and the and the um joy cons it's, it's something of um that enhanced the gaming experience i can't really put it in words but uh, one thing that really sticks out to me most is the games and how um how beautifully crafted they are like for example the uh, mario um odyssey man that game is unbelievable like I just and I, like I said, I'm new, and I know that game been out for a while. But like how great and how clever they put that game together. Yeah, yeah. So that was the thing about and that. And I was playing it off air once, and uh, Project Storm and Storm was watching it, and he was he was like, "Don't tell me this." And he Googled something, and then come to find out, it's running at 60 frames per second. Wow. Yeah. And wow. that's key. That's, yeah. that's the key these days. For me, that's a big selling point. You know what I'm saying? Right. For real. So he was kind of shocked, and there's actually quite a few games, more than you would think, that is running at 60 frames per second on the Switch. Mm. For me, I, can't, I have never trained my eye to notice anything like that. I just say, oh, it's pretty. <laughs> 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 there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's nothing completely hey. wrong with it. You know what I mean? Wrong with it. Go ahead, Ron. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I agree with you, bro. It ain't nothing yeah. wrong with it. Hey, now, hey, Ron, now I want to get your thoughts on FPS. Like, I want to get your thoughts on the frame rate, man, because frame, to me, frame rate is everything, bro. Okay. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. Now, certain games, you don't need 60 FPS. Like, you can enjoy you can just enjoy the games. Like, um, like the Ratchet & Clank right now, you know, it's going to be beautiful at 4K. But the, the rumor is it's going to be running on PS5 at 30 frames per second. Mm -hmm. So, if it was running at 60 and 4K, that would just be mind-blowing, man. Like, mm -hmm. there's nothing like seeing, because I make 4K content, right? I stream, I do my streams in 4K 60 and all that, right? Okay. And it just makes everything seem smooth. I'm talking about, like, butter smooth, bro. No hiccups, no glitches in the background. Like, when you're when you're moving the camera left and right in these shooters and stuff, man, mm -hmm. and just to see the trees and the buildings and the mount mountains in the distance, they put, like, they're, they're not choppy or blurry. Man, that makes the whole gaming experience I agree. Me a lot better, man. I agree. And it's yeah. funny because I, I'm actually kind of new to it myself. I'm kind of like Bunny. Um, I never, like, really put a lot of emphasis in the, um, in the frame rates. But I did notice a difference when I actually, I was playing, uh, one one day i was playing nba 2k on the oh, yeah. nintendo uh wii u and it runs at 30 frames a second and boy it's a difference actually i played 2k on a switch and it was running at 30 frames a second and it just it's not the same don't get me wrong that game running uh looking that beautiful uh, on the switch was impressive but uh it was running at 30 frames it made it tough for me to kind of get into it so I definitely see a difference uh, when it comes to you know certain games with that with that frame rate. It's like I need I need I need 
60 frames per second when I'm playing these sports games. Like, I need it. And Call of Duty, too. Like, I need it. But as far as, like, other games, 30, if it's running at 30 frames, it's not so so much of a big deal. Like, uh, God of War and stuff, that, you know, stuff like that. I don't really need it, but I definitely see the importance of frame rates, like, more than ever before now. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sorry for all of that. That was a lot. <laughs> and no, no, man, that's that's perfect right there because, you know, me, Bunny, we might have to tell both of us to shut up sometimes <laughs> because, man, I'm going, I'm telling you, these topics get me excited, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. I love having these discussions, especially on a Sunday evening. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Bunny, what, if you don't mind, uh -huh. can you can you share you why you don't really care about frame rate? Is it because you just... You just really don't care. You just care about what you're seeing on the screen, or you just have nobody's ever just sat you down and say, "Hey, bunny, check this out. 60 FPS right here. Feel this." You know what I'm saying? Like, what is the hot? What's your thoughts? The actual 100% reason is my natural vision. Okay. Okay. Um, and everybody's vision is different, so that's, right. that's important. Well, when I say my vision, I suffer with extreme nearsightedness. Okay. Like literally, if I take my glasses off. If I was in your face, in order for your face to be focused for me to see, I have to be virtually about an inch away from your face. Okay. Okay. Um, also, I'm they, I'm getting tested yearly because mm -hmm. they think I'm in the beginning stages of glaucoma. Oh. Oh wow. Wow. So, and my vision has all. I've always worn Coca-Cola bottle thick glasses since I was a child. Uh, laser surgery has actually, in about the last 10 years, laser surgery has just gotten to the stages of where it can help me. Mm -hmm. But even after laser, I'm still going to be wearing glasses. Mm. Um, my nearsightedness is so bad that the, do the eye surgeons have warned me if my vision turns into a tunnel vision like a horse with blinders on, Yep. I need to drop wow. everything I'm doing and rush to the surgeon's office immediately because that means my retinas are tearing from the back of my eyes. Oh, wow. Well, wow. so, yeah. so now, now, that, now you understand ahead. what I mean when I say I don't catch things yeah. that quickly and things is because of my natural vision. I got you. Okay. And see, people don't pay attention like when, when, when it comes to like like people the, the way they perceive things uh, you know like i might be like yo man gta 5 was a perfect example on the xbox right that's the base xbox the base model xbox one right mm -hmm. i'm trying to tell my friends i'm like yo man i me personally and, and i've seen it in on, on playstation as well now um with even on detroit become human for example i was doing a live stream i had ghost of tsushima i had days gone i had detroit i had god of war i had spider-man I, I had all these games Death Stranding, all these games running on that stream, right? Mm -hmm. And I could immediately pick out the blurriness or whatever. Like anytime you see blurriness in the game and it's not motion blur, <clears throat> which I turn off by the way, if you if you see any kind of blurriness, that might indicate that that's not the highest frame rate. That might not be 60 frames per second. Like if you see it and it's looking nasty. Like Bunny, you talked about how you had an experience and you did notice poor frame rate. Mm -hmm. you know what it I'm has saying? to be significant for me to notice it right now okay. Peach just said Peach just said some games cause me to have headaches and, and uh, mm -hmm. the brightness all right so let me tell y'all right now this is important something that y'all have to do right if you have a tv that with a backlight like a lcd tv or led tv y'all turn your backlight down below halfway when you're okay. playing games. and do not play these games in a dark room y'all or a real dimly lit room have one at least a lamp or a light or something on when you play these games now look this up after the show because okay. bunny educated me on um how bunny we were talking about some kind of fatigue or whatever i can't remember but you know what i'm saying but don't play these games in the dark and turn your backlight down on your tv and you'll be able to gain a whole lot and if you wear glasses like myself you know i can mm -hmm. see but I need glasses because my right eye, my left eye is stronger than my right. So mm -hmm. they did something special with these glasses where they put something in and I forget what it's called, but I'm able to sit here and game in HDR and all types of different things all day long, y'all. Don't no headaches. So what why why you're getting the headaches, Peach, is it's called eye strain. Mm. Like the, the bright lights or your eyes are just focused on this bright, bright light the whole time and then you start getting these headaches. And that's what's happening. I'm telling you right now. 
turn your uh, contrast down, depending on what display you have, turn that down to about 85% or whatever that is. Never keep it at 100 because it, it, it's not good for you, your, your uh, TV. And then turn that backlight down and see how long you be gaming without headaches and stuff. But that's what it is. And don't watch movies and play games at night time. I mean, like in the dark, in complete darkness. Okay. It's not, it's not good for y'all. I'm glad you told me that because, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I will. And then there's also another reason why some people don't notice frame rates or have issues like Peach does because, um, like, I had a friend who, she had always had a nice PC to run World of Warcraft, but she always had to run it on the lowest possible settings. And the reason is, is because she was in a horrific car crash that she should have died in, and she's, like, basically disabled, but it messed up her brain to wow. where she can't handle rapid movements, high intensity graphics and things like that. Wow. So, yeah, she she should have died in a car accident. That's how bad it was. And it's left her mentally to where she she can't work. Um she always suffered with migraine stuff like that, but Whenever she buys yeah. a PC, she basically has to run that PC. Like, at the time that I knew her, PS3's graphics was too much for her. Mm, yeah. So, and it, is, uh, it definitely depends on the person and situation mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know what I mean? That's that's yeah. the whole point. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but, 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 yeah, so the, the it, because we get in arguments about frame rates, y'all. Like, we get in, <laughs> I'm talking about full flesh on X, my friends on Xbox, man. Yeah. So we, first of all, we argue about everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> like everything. That's the cool thing to do, y'all. Um, I've been playing Xbox in the, since it first launched, the original OG, you know what I'm saying? With the Duke controller and all that, man. Mm -hmm. So Halo and all that. But my thing is, though, frame rate, see, when you, when you train yourself to see it, and I don't want to talk about it too long because I know we got a few topics to cover, but... When you train yourself to see it, you can't go back to yeah. 30 or below 30. Like, exactly. PUBG, launched, PUBG launched on Xbox or whatever. I played yep. it on PC at 60. Went back to Xbox One, even the One X, right? Yep. And it still ran below 30 at first. Now it's optimized to hit 30 and all that. Mm -hmm. But it still looks different than when I go over to Stadia, for example. Um, Stadia is running the game at 60 FPS, and people won't understand what I mean by that. They'll just be like, yo, you capping, man. Like, Stadia, <laughs> are you just trying to talk? But that's not the case. The game plays much more smoothly over there. So I'm going to leave it right there because I know we might be doing some cloud gaming talk No, later. no, no, no. What I'm saying is, but that also leads to get this whole topic here mm -hmm. leads to gamer diversity. Sure does, yep. Think, think about it because, yep. like, with my limitations with my eyes and things, that cuts mm -hmm. me out of things. You guys also know I get motion sickness from first person view yep. games. And you know, I yep, feel, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I wish that wasn't the case. We had this discussion. Mm -hmm. I wish you could experience these games because I know there's a lot of games. Do you mind sharing like the fact that you want to, you know what I mean? Like, do you mind sharing a little bit of the games oh, that you want them? That's like cyberpunk and other stuff. Yeah, like, that. I, I, like I said, I wanted to play cyberpunk. I wanted to play Sea of Thieves. Um, I wanted to play, um, God, I tried Call of Duty when it first came out. I couldn't play that. I had to end up playing Gears of War, um, mm -hmm. which was fine. Um, VR, I would love to try VR, but <laughs> we know that <laughs> ain't going to work. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there, there have been things that I wanted to play, but I just couldn't. Um, when I was younger, I played... Um, and, about the only game I risk getting sick with was Clive Barker's Undying. I know about it. Trust me, I was on a PC. Okay, that and Jericho. They made both of them first person view. And I love Clive Barker, but those were two games that I couldn't get through because of the fact of I was super sick from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I don't want to play those, it's just that. I can't physically, and that yeah. leads to like when I go into GameStop and things, they're like, "Oh, do you want to pre-order Cyberpunk? Oh, I can't play first-person view, and everybody, or you want the new Call of Duty? I can't play first-person view, and here's everybody in the store whipping their heads around, looking at me like I don't lost my mind." Mm, yeah, that's deep. 
I mean, yeah, yeah they'll yeah. literally look at me like, you, you can't play what? What games do you play? And then they think at that point, the moment you hear you can't play first person games, you automatically think that person has nothing to play. Yeah. And that's because yeah. of that person's gamer style. Mm, okay. Yeah. So like at first, at first I was like Bunny, if you just knew what you was missing at first, now that's just me, the selfish part of me right there. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. like, you just what? You never played what? You never you never, what? You know what I'm saying? Like Flight Simulator and all these other games is dropping right now, and I get it. See, see, we we see sometimes we take that for granted. Like, and we we are on stream, right? Right, wrong, right? We might be, we all might be doing a podcast or something, right? Mm -hmm. So we have somebody say, "Hey, yo, man, I don't like that game." Immediately, my antenna my antenna goes up like, "Yo, this is a troll right here." <laughs> but it could be because of cases like this, man. Exactly. So I have to be more mindful. Man. Me too, and uh, you made a you made a great point saying that, man. Because I I've, I quickly jumped the gun like that too, without even, you know, giving people an opportunity to explain or, or anything else. I'm just automatically jumping on the on the assumption that right. they just don't like. It. Yeah, it's a, it's it's yeah. I can't do that. And I mean, and, it's, and, and for me, I don't even say I don't like the game. Mm -hmm. What I say is I can't play it, so I have no no view on it. Like okay. when I was watching the Xbox game show, I watch all the shows just to see what games are coming out that I might want to play. Okay. But when I was watching the show out of 21 games, seven of them were first person, so I had to automatically eliminate those. Wow. Yeah. 21 of mm -hmm. the games shown at the Xbox right. conference were first person. Mm -hmm. And I'm noticing okay. going into next gen, a lot of games are first person. Yep. I actually know that I know a few people that that, that have the same issue with uh, first person shooter games. First person games, period. Mm -hmm. It's uh, they can be they can't handle it. They, you know, does stuff to them, uh, makes them uh -huh. dizzy, and vertigo, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm like that with certain like I was playing Ace Combat Seven. I did a stream a day on that over on Xbox and um. First person, yeah, man, going upside down and all that, man. Mm -hmm. Same with Star Wars, like Star Wars, any Rogue Squadron or what, any of those games that you know, where that if that plane turns turns upside down and does does loops and stuff, then I might feel some type of way. But mm -hmm. I can get on roller coasters and all that. It's crazy, man. It's just crazy mm -hmm. how it works, you know. That is crazy. But I posted a gameplay clip of Spider-Man uh, last week, actually, and it was a, it was, I was actually jumping from a, a rooftop or something, and I was flying down real fast. They <laughs> 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 commented on the tweet like, "Whoa, that made me dizzy," and I'm like, "Yeah, yep." Yeah. And Bunny explained it, man. I wish, boy, I wish this would have been the first episode, Bunny, that we could have really just touched on it <laughs> because I know we want to move through these tie eight because it's going to get lit in a minute. You know what I'm saying? I know that yeah. it's going to get really lit after a while when we start talking more Switch, Xbox, PS4, Stadium, and all that. But see, here, and so, like I said, with gamer diversity, like I picked the Switch because I found games that I really, really wanted on it. Mm -hmm. Um,. I work so much that I really, it's pointless for me to get one more than one console uh, because I work so much. But I got the Switch and then I started looking into games and things and my collection is almost to 150 games. Mm -hmm. And I've had my Switch for less than three years. So you know that's the craziness of the whole thing because there's so many, and prime example my friend sent me a list of her games she has about 115 games between the two of us we only had 25 of the same games that's that is amazing that's amazing so it, it's a huge thing with the switch with different games things like that right but question mm -hmm. so Storm, I know you you've played all consoles. You've you've played uh, all consoles, uh, you play PC. Right now, your diversity or your gamer style has you favoring Stadia. Yep. Why is that? Well, uh, this is a good question right here. I'm I'm heavily 
heavily shifted over towards Stadia right now because of the convenience of it, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Now, take all the fanboyism out and stuff like that. I love all these platforms. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, people, you could take some of the most diehard individuals out here, right? You know what I'm saying? You could take some of the most diehard individuals. Like, say Dirk, for example. Say uh, Dev right here. Uh, Hyperfan Gaming, man. Like, the most hardcore um, from any platform. You know what I'm saying? And you might see that some of them, you might be surprised to know that some of them do own multiple platforms. You know what I'm saying? Like, they might own an Xbox and a PlayStation or a PlayStation and a Switch or a Switch and a PC or whatever the case is. Stadia and GeForce now, whatever. So, I think that I, I like the whole allure of the cloud gaming um, technology and where, where the industry could go in the next five to ten years. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could be talking about crazy... Uh, shared world games and stuff like that major 1000 player battle royale games and stuff like that with different factions at, at the same time real time man halo gears of war you know what i'm saying um just having like hundreds of of, of, of players on on the, on the maps and stuff man like th this is what cloud gaming is about for me but with stadia it's like it's, an, it's new. They beat everybody really to the punch when it came to like a reliable cloud gaming solution, right? Um, it doesn't have all the games right now, but the games are coming. And see, Rome, um, the fact that I got, I have the PS4 Pro, I got the Xbox One X, I have a gaming PC, I have Shadow PC, which is a virtual PC in the cloud. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole wow. virtual PC. You could do anything on it. Excel, Word, um, you can stream off of it if you want to. You can add a hard drive to recognize your hard drive, man. You can do editing on that thing. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it gives you faster internet than you might have at home. Like for cer certain people, not just not you on in particular, but for certain mm -hmm. people that may not have the fastest internet. Like I have a gig up and down, but Shadow PC is is more reliable than mine. So this whole cloud gaming thing has me excited. Because okay. I got tired of the whole the whole loop that we're going through right now. We get excited about Xbox, then Halo Infinite gets delayed. We get excited about PS5, and then now they're saying the old PS4 games. If I'm a hardcore PlayStation game, now those games are going to PC. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now we're giving the PC players something to laugh at us about. All that. See, when you get, when, I think when you get caught up in that, man, that's where the trouble is. But I love Stadia just because of all those things I just said and more, man. It's just like. It's so the technology behind it is crazy, but I'm gonna leave it right there for a minute. Okay, that's that's actually what's up, man. I I feel like if 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 Stadia can exist and other cloud gaming platforms can exist, um, along with um, like uh, like hardware, then I'm I'm all I'm all for it, cause I'm I'm more uh. uh a possessive type of guy where I, I want to own my stuff and that's the only thing that keeps me from diving or even checking out like stuff like Stadia even though I think the technology is amazing yeah. I, it's something I personally won't invest in just just because of my own personal um, beliefs and values you know what I mean it's yep. just it's just as a, as a consumer I feel like I need to see my investment if that makes sense you know what I'm saying gotcha. no I got you yeah. And right now, as I was saying at the beginning of the stream, right now, with like Frogwares and their publisher, they're having a battle right now. So mm -hmm. because of that, you cannot buy the Sinking City digitally on Steam, PlayStation 4, or Xbox right now. Mm. Um, because they're in a legal battle with their publisher. So it was pulled from all of those platforms with digital um right now the only place you can find it is on the switch because frogwares published it on the switch so um, digital has its ups and downs just like physical has its ups and downs just like stadia has its ups and downs right there's always two sides to every coin and when you realize that there are two sides you realize neither side is right or wrong it's just that's another thing gamers need to get past. There's no right and wrong of what you choose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You choose what's convenient for you or what's best for you. Just mm -hmm. as Stadia is good for you, Xbox mm -hmm. is good for other people, Switch is great for people, and PlayStation is good for people, but we got to get out of the mindset that, okay, if you're not following what I follow, then it's wrong. 
Right, right. And um, that's one of the things that we as gamers need to mm -hmm. get out of. And I think part of the issue is also some of these companies push us towards stuff like that. True that. Yeah, you made me definitely open my eyes to that one. I okay. Um, and the reason I say that is it's because, like, if you notice, PlayStation and Microsoft are always throwing jabs at each other. <laughs> Slight little jabs at each other. But that riles up the fan base. And I think another huge problem that we're having now that we didn't have last gen or the gens previous to this is the advent of the internet. And we now have tons of influencers. Mm -hmm. People who are sitting up here saying things, promoting things, and then there's always going to be a leader and there's always going to be a follower. Mm -hmm. And once those leaders get into those positions, the followers just flock to them like sheep. Right. And yep. that's one thing, like I started my channel because I realized that the people who talk about like Nintendo Switch games and things like that, Mm -hmm. Most of them are not my gamer style. Most of them don't play the games that I play. Yeah. Most don't even review, like, it's very few. I see more PC people showing games like the one I'm playing off on PC. Like, if I ever get stuck in one of these games, when I have to Google it on YouTube or something like that, it's usually a PC player who has to point out what the issue is. Yeah. Uh -oh. So... Yeah. We have the problem of the influencers, and then, like I said, they're the leaders, and you got always have the people who are the sheep. And then that's when we get into these huge, huge, huge console battles. Once you step out of that and step back and take a look, you can see it easier. Okay? Once you become not the typical gamer, like I'm not a typical gamer, my, my collection and Storm here can tell you there's probably at least 20 games on that list he's never heard of. Never. <laughs> some, of them, some of them that I thought were could have. Now, I don't, and I won't say trash because you can't call something trash that you haven't tried. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In my opinion. Now. Right. So I won't. So I, it's some certain games that I thought I could look at it and say, ah, oh, man. At times, I thought Oct uh, Octopath Travelers was one of those games. When I first saw it, upon first glance, because you know I'm a graphics fiend. You know what I'm saying? When I first saw that game, I'm like, ah, man, that ain't for me. But then I saw Link TV, man, on Stadia. I saw him playing the game and other people. And then I was like, yo, this is dopeness right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's definitely something that's interesting. I didn't realize there was eight characters. So, you know, if I was in hater mode, I'd be like, man, get that trash out of here. That ain't no Gears of War. That ain't no, uh, no guilt for Stadia. That ain't no uh, God of War graphics and stuff like that, man. Get out of here with that trash. You know, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm learning to open the mind up. Man, I, I got an interesting story to share with y'all. So, uh, yeah, I know y'all know. Um, for a while before the Switch came out, there was a ton of hype and everything. Uh, you know, rumors, and it was just, <laughs> it was about X, and it's supposed to be, you know, it's gonna compete with the PlayStation and Xbox, and it's gonna oh, yeah. be powerful. You remember all that stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when they finally, when Nintendo finally unveiled it, and I looked at it, and they they showed what it was gonna do, I, bro, I, I this is honest to God truth. I was like, this trash, and I was mm. mad at Nintendo, <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, keep it real, yeah, like yeah, I was, I'm, I'm keeping it all the way 100, man, and I was like, man, this is horrible. Nintendo is over for Nintendo, doom and gloom, and I trashed the Nintendo Switch for years until I finally got it, and I said, holy crap, I can't believe what I missed out on. And that's, wow. that's pretty much it, yeah. And I my lesson than that. That and the fact that, like I said, everybody saw it. There was, you in the beginning, before it came yeah. out, you should have saw how many hate videos there were on it. <laughs> I mean, there were yeah. tons of hate that. videos. <laughs> and most of those people who ended up getting the Switch yeah. ended up uh, changing their uh, view on it. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so and then did it's apology for me, Bunny. Videos. Bunny, it's hard for me. I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, but it's no, hard for me. No, no, no. No, it's there's so a hard different. Beautiful 4K graphics, ultra setting <laughs> graphics on PC and all. It's so hard, Bunny. No, but no, no. Ahead, but what I'm, I'm saying is, is you never trashed the Switch. You just said, you know, it's not for no, me. I'm guilty, I I'm guilty of trashing it too. I ain't. I can't lie. I'm, I gotta say it today. You know what I'm saying? While Rome's on the panel, I gotta put it out there. I, I, I won't. I'll feel guilty all the rest of the week. If I don't, I have definitely trashed it live on air and everything. Oh, but okay. I did not trash the first party exclusives. You see what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't right. trash that because then I look like a fool. You know, yeah. I couldn't trash the fact that Nintendo has the brand that it has 100 years or whatever. No, nobody else is doing it. I can't trash that they're number one in the Asian market. You know, they're, they're just running that whole economy pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. yo, I can't hate. Yeah, that's how I kind of feel too. Like if they doing their thing and it's successful, I can't hate. But I, yeah. I tell you this, bro, uh, I'm, I'm playing Katana Zero, and you want to uh -huh. talk about 4K graphics, and, bro? That game is straight eight. Let me look it up. It's, yeah, Let me look bro. it up. It's a fire it, game. It's, it looks good. I saw him playing it. I was like, what game is this? And so many <laughs> games come out literally on the Switch that I miss a whole bunch of them yeah but um but yeah so that's that's the things that we have to that as us as gamers have to realize yeah. each one of us is different we're not going to play the same things that everybody else plays uh -huh. um we each are going to have to understand that they make games for everybody uh, we also have to understand that like right now this generation for some reason the gamers are the ones fighting for the companies, yeah. but the companies, but the companies are not. They're they're stepping back, and we got got tons of free marketing from us. Let's be honest, from us. Mm -hmm. But there, some of the companies, and even Nintendo, Stadia, all of them, they're not providing the things we need to. Um, they're not providing the things we need to convince us to buy the con console. Yeah. Um, they're not showing us a reason to spend our money. And that's part of like the, the diversity of gamers is, yeah, there's not games for everybody around here. Okay? But yeah. that is leading to all these stupid console wars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Because with them leading to the console wars, they're not, um, with the console wars, we're fighting for them to give them our yeah. money. You know, yeah. that's the reason I don't buy a console first day one. Because I want to know what you're going to put out on it. You give yeah. me a reason to buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the thing. And we have to we have to realize that as gamers we have to realize that everybody doesn't play the same things you play okay you can play it that's perfectly fine Thank you. but we need to stop hating each other for it and that's the point that you is know, the ultimate point now for me I, I don't i don't hate nobody's you know for their preference right mm -hmm. yeah. You know, sometimes where, you know, if there's a business practice that I may disagree with, I might get into a uh, force with somebody or, yeah. you know, you know, something like that. But uh, depending on, you know, the direction or the energy of the conversation, man, it may go south or whatever the case may be. And so I guess <laughs> why, you know what I mean? So it might be wise for me to pull out or somebody else to pull out of the conversation if it gets that way or it gets toxic. Yeah, so, man. You know, I think that's passion uh, yep. when it comes to this stuff, you know? And well, I, I know, yeah, yeah. That also boils me... down to, that also boils down to you're getting super defensive. True that. Yeah. I mean, some True of these that. people get super defensive about these companies. Yeah. But these companies are not even paying them to be that defensive. Definitely. <laughs> they really do. You're right. You're right. And, and when you think about the fact that you're grown, I mean, like, we yelling at TVs and stuff, man, really up here, yelling at TVs and mad and, and got to take a break. 
for an argument that happened online with somebody we don't even know right. about a, a console manufacturer that's getting billions and laughing at us, laughing at us when they go to sleep at night. You know what I'm saying? Like these fools out here, boy, they put the Craig the Brute up there. That's some crazy stuff, but man, I got a billion in the bank. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so this is what we got to think about. You know, in Rome, I, I know you sounded like you wanted to say some more, man. You want to oh, yeah. go ahead and give some more of your thoughts out there? Well, yeah, just a little bit. Like, when it comes, because that was an interesting. Yo, you were going somewhere with that one. Like, that's a, <laughs> hey, we talk about it all the time. Bunny knows. You know what I'm saying? We talk about it on air, mm -hmm. off air, behind the scenes, whatever, man. And it, it, it's really, to me, that's why I pr take pride in being an eclectic gamer, man. I could just go in everybody's world, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and hang out. Because yeah, I pay my right. money just like y'all. You right. know what I'm saying? I play the yeah. games that y'all play too, some of them. So right. go ahead, man. I mean, what else did you want to throw out there? Uh, no, just just basically that. Like I was gonna say, like you'll never see me. Uh, you know, I prefer PlayStation. So I'm, I, and I'm open and honest about that. So I, you'll never see me say, uh, PlayStation is better just because, you know, it's just a better system or PlayStation is better because the graphics is better or whatever, the, whatever the case may be. Like you'll never see me talk about that kind of stuff. So I, mm -hmm. I'm always on. A, I'm on. I'm always on um talking about the business aspect of things like for example you know the whole uh, exclusive is anti-consumer argument so that always those kind of things get me fired up so you know playstation is big on exclusives nintendo was big on exclusives xbox is putting this narrative out that exclusives is you know not you know what it should be it's, you know mm -hmm. gamers for everybody and i personally don't believe in that but then it got fans that believe in that you know what i mean right. and so that that causes these clashes that i have where i go get into and don't get me wrong i do like to have fun and troll and not not me to admit yeah yeah it's fun and I, I i noticed like you know people like day dub um post up and a lot of these other guys you know playstation guys xbox guys a lot of these guys is cool as hell right. and they, they talk a lot of trash on there and it's fun and it's funny but some people might make me you know mistake it for you know console wars and stuff like that and not you know I don't, I don't want the lines to be blurred when it comes to stuff like that you know what i mean yep yeah exactly That's a great point man great Thanks, points bro. right there and see you don't want that to be you don't want it to become detrimental to what we love to do our passion our right. hobby you know what i'm saying exactly. um this is what we've been doing some of us for years and, and over a decade or two or three or four you know what i'm saying but it is to me i'm kind of laying back from that because I, I i was heated i told you i was heated in that stuff back in the day man and then even up until this current generation of uh of hardware yeah i was I, you know what it did for me rome y'all and bunny it, it, it ruined my gaming experience y'all it ruined it like i was to the point this is where this is why when i say stadia saved me right here it saved me because mm -hmm. i was caught in that web you can't get out once you're in it. It's not that easy to get out of it. It's kind of like an addiction, man. You get in there, somebody say something about your platform of choice. You love it. You know they out here capping. You know they're saying something that's, that's, that's not, based, not based on facts and data and all that stuff. So you, it, you, you kind of take it. You can eat some of it, right? But you can't let somebody blatantly say the PS5 is only going to run at 30 frames per second. Right. Now, can you, right. can you sit there and just let that, that you know, if that's a tweet right in front of your face, can you just say that's what I'm saying? You got to like that. It's like a blatant lie. Yeah, it's like yeah, a blatant lie. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. When it comes, and when, when it comes to Stadia, y'all, I'm telling y'all, man, people... You can still have your plat your console. And I'm not here to sell Stadia. That's not what I do. I don't get paid. If I did, I'll let y'all know, man. I'm getting paid. I ain't using the fanny. I'm a straight nub. I'm going to church on Sunday. All that, right? But what I'm saying is, I'm not getting paid, so I can I can share my opinion, man. Stadia, it works. The technology is mind-blowing. XCloud is about to get there. PlayStation just connected with Microsoft to get their Azure servers working up or, or, or whatever it is, so that I'm sure pay it please now is gonna evolve at some point this generation this next generation i mean the upcoming generation i'm sure it's going to evolve at some point to the fact that to the point where it's going to be like dang god of war running in a yeah. cloud i could play it anywhere what <laughs> and it's going to be crazy don't we want that for the gaming industry though you nintendo don't he knows i've been talking about nintendo putting their library if nintendo put their library in the cloud it's game over i'm gonna make 95 percent of my content on those games i Man. love them 
but I just don't love the fact that I feel like I'm just getting duped by Nintendo each generation because they don't want to jump up and give me 4K high setting graphics and stuff like that because I bought a 4K TV, I made an investment. Like you just said, Ron, we, we, make, we, we, we invest in these platforms. I don't want to invest in these pla in a Nintendo that's not trying to keep up and advance their technology to the point where it can keep up with the competition who is trying to provide a product for enthusiasts like myself. Okay. I call myself a fake enthusiast because I don't want people asking me, hey, Project Storm, man, what's the square root of this and the clock speeds and all that? Nah, I, I don't go that deep into it, but I do, I can tell you. I know my stuff when it comes to this hardware and all that. And if I don't know it, I can research it. You know what I'm saying? I'm a smart brother. Mm -hmm. So it, that what, that's right there. That's what I think about the whole thing. You know now, what? Now that you made a great point. I want to say this, and I don't want to jump, you know, like yeah. you know, stage hog or nothing, but um i think that these companies try to appeal to different markets and i think the reason why is because it gives them a better chance at thriving in the game industry because i think that if there was like nintendo came out with a system that did the same thing and that playstation and xbox did you know at one point then uh, it would be tough for one of the you know the, the the businesses to survive if that makes sense what i'm trying to say like so like i think that's why nintendo went the direction they went in trying to appeal to a different market um also i guess appealing to um to you know hardcore gamers too because they got some 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 good games but i think that overall i think it seems like they're appealing to a different market and i think xbox in the direction that they're going in with the stuff that they're doing they're trying to appeal to a different market it, yeah. it, it looks like it to me that's you know what i'm saying so yeah I think that's uh and that, of course that's diversity too but I think that when it when it when it comes to Xbox catching a lot of a uh, lot of heat it's it's beca it's because they wasn't like that before and a lot of core fans you know such as myself um you know they 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 feel abandoned you know what I mean like, to a degree at least that's how I'm seeing it but you know like they just ain't providing the games that they once did yeah yeah so, all right money i know but, you were gonna say something yeah i was gonna say you brought up so, a point about something and mm -hmm. um the point uh, that you brought up was about um i don't remember what the point was but what it led me to thinking was about how we're with the companies and things okay um do you get a feeling oh this is a question i wanted to ask do you guys get the feeling that these companies are telling gamers what they need to what they want to play yeah i think L so like um, prime example in some ways. well no yeah. the reason i say that is because i remember back at the beginning of this gen you know mm -hmm. remember the whole single player games narrative is dead oh god yeah yeah multiplayer that. is where it's at yeah Oh. And they roasted Phil Spencer for things that he said. You know what I'm saying? They did all that. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's it's yeah. It, it's it's great to have competition, things like that. But also, people. It goes back to the sheep mentality. Yeah. People need to start thinking for themselves. Right. Right. And that's one thing. Like, you can ask for companies to change whatever they can change, but I'm not even asking that. I'm just asking for gamers to start changing their perspective on things. There you go. Well, look, speaking of that right there, we got some great um, some great uh, people in the chat right now that said some, some things that's resonating right now, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, with me. So I just wanted to go ahead and uh, highlight a few of those real quick. Uh, yes. Ashes to Ashes said 100% spot on. As gamers, they should all coexist. All it does is increase competition and drive the industry to bigger and badder things. You know what I'm saying? I get what he's saying right there. Antonio came in and said, at the same time, respectful and fun uh, trash talking, like in sports, keep the competition going and is vital for the platforms. I like that. And, yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Um, and then he says, <clears throat> Stadia right now has most of the most of its attention on publishers and devs instead of consumers and trying to get the infrastructure and software as easy to use with the de with developer feedback in my opinion that's what he said and i agree with that you know what i'm saying like some people expect Stadia to be doing what microsoft wrong, wrong let me ask you something right you all right you haven't tried and then we'll get right to what peach was saying real quick because i do want to highlight that mm -hmm. um but 
you haven't tried Stadia yet, right? No, I haven't tried it. Yeah. No cloud gaming, X Cloud. What about X Cloud? What I about did, GeForce? I did try X Cloud. Okay, I, I cool. Was in the X Cloud program, you know that little um, the trial program. Yep. Yep. So the, yeah, they invited me and I tried it and it was cool. Okay. It was cool. I actually, I actually um, tried it under Wi-Fi and I tried it under the 4G. Um, I don't have 5G on my phone, so um, mm -hmm. I tried it and it, it, it was a little hitchy. You know, but uh, yeah. under Wi-Fi, it was solid. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was solid. But my my thing about it, bro, and this is the honest of God truth. My thing about it is um, the access part of it. So I think that it's it's tons of variables that get in the way of me accessing my games. Right. And if I spent my money, especially with Stadia, bro, if I I get like not buying the console, uh -huh. but in the, in the hardware. But if I'm paying sixty dollars to mm -hmm. get a game and for god god forsaken reason my internet goes down or I get you on that. man you know I'm, you know and i I'm get like, you on that yeah that's, I, I that's do. yeah i don't know i don't know if that's something they're working on i don't know because then it might defeat what stadia is all about but a lot of people that's that is one of the only valid points that i really have to 100 percent agree with every time i hear it but mm -hmm. at the same time wrong most people these days are depending on the internet to patch their games, update their games, play online. Xbox, you got to play online. You got to pay to play online, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, yeah, you got to pay to play online with PlayStation. It wasn't always like that, but you got to pay now. You know what I'm saying? Nintendo, uh, how does it work, Bunny? Uh, in order to play online for Nintendo First Party, you have to have the uh, online, the uh, $20 a year. Most third parties that's free to play, you don't have to have it at all. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't see. Know that. Yeah. So, real quick, now this is going to be lit right here. I told you it's going to get lit. So, I'm going to go back to Peach's um, uh, remarks because I like what she said right here. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, a lot, of, a lot of people from the 360 feel extremely uh, entitled because last gen gave them more options to play all kinds of games. Some games were too early access and exclusivity. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, early access and exclusivity is what you're All right, time has changed, and, and Sony's getting all the good deals. There's a hint of jealousy. You know what I'm saying? And she says, this is the biggest problem about fandom, and you're absolutely right. Then Ashley jumps right in right on time. Says, uh, the only time my internet has gone down, this is toward me and you, Ron, when we were talking about the internet issue with uh, Stadia and all that. Uh, has it's eight years, um, eight is eight years twice and um, twice only twice, right? I guess, and that was because my electricity went out. You ain't playing uh, anything then, that's true, and that's yeah. the thing. Now, see, this right here is a good point. And this is why we have these discussions, y'all. The, dis the discourse is always necessary for us. This is what me and like Bunny and I wanted to provide a platform that we can get in here and chill. No, no yelling, no hoopla, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? No derogatory, no demeaning stuff. No disrespect. This is what we wanted to do. So when Bunny, this Rome, so when she, when we, basically, we were talking behind the scenes, and I, I said to her, as well as MM2K, and probably whoever else that was trying to tell Bunny that, because this, this is necessary, I think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yes, you can have 100,000 podcasts, right? Mm -hmm. How many podcasts can you go on where you can chill and you can really have a conversation without being right. talked over or judged or mistreated or whatever? You know what I'm saying? So that's not what we're trying to provide. What we're trying to do is have this right here. A nice, it's kind of like going in a nice little uh, soulful um, lounge or whatever and really connected with the artist. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I that's like what I like about this right here with this chat. Everybody that joined, thank y'all. Rome, man, definitely thank you oh, for coming on. But thank you. this right here is what it's all about, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, what are y'all thoughts on 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 um any of that stuff or what or moving right along? What y'all you know? What do y'all think? I mean, honestly, like my power can go out, and the only thing I would have to worry about is like if I was playing a game, if it was an online game. I play mostly games that's not necessarily online. So, so if my power goes out, I just pull my switch out the dock and keep playing in the dark. See, isn't that right. beautiful? <laughs> yeah, see, you know, don't laugh. Now, see, when you laugh, that does something that hurts me. That hurts oh. me. I think it's a shot. It feels like a shot is fired. But at the same time, though, Rome, I know that Bunny's not firing a shot. 
but it sounds like it because she's laughing. You see, now that can get something started right there. Now me and Bunny can go yep. right at it. You know what I'm saying? Like what you trying yeah. to say, Bunny? Yeah, that never but, does that. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? But wow. yeah, but you that's... Gotta to, yeah, I, you got to be able to catch that. Yeah. But that's the thing. So like for me, like um, prime example, uh, so you know the storms that's been coming through, Storm. A lot. Uh, okay. Um, Friday, my mom called me up and she's like, oh, I got red on my island. I need you to come over here and verify some artwork. That's the only uh -huh. time for Animal Crossing I need to go online is when I'm going to somebody else's island. Mm -hmm. That first clap of lightning that came through and thunder that rolled through, my lights flickered. I called her up and said, open up your island. I'm going to run over there now. And then, because I might lose power. Right, and she yeah. she hurried up and got online. I did what I needed to do at her island. Then I bounced off because if I lost power and lost my internet while I was on her island, everything would have been lost. So typically, I don't play games that require online. So if my power goes out, oh well, power's out. I just pop a cartridge in and continue playing. Yeah, yeah. Now, man, oh, this is it, this is good. Hey, but hey, Ron, for you, please touch on. But oh, go ahead. But after that, after you, after you, Bunny, please, oh. Rome, touch on Antonio's remark because I want to hear your thoughts on his remark. But go ahead, Bunny. I was gonna oh, say, and for you, uh, with, if with you're playing, on your phone. if you're playing on Stadia on your phone, you mm -hmm. most likely have flipped to 5G or whatever. So for you, if you're playing on your phone, it's not gonna affect you. It will only affect you when you're playing on TV if your power. I never out. thought about what Antonio just said, and that's why I was trying. Because Rome just had a good point that makes me always feel that that I uh -huh. have to shut up when people say that because that's the only thing I can't counter. But oh, now man. Antonio comes back. Hey man, y'all don't understand, man. This ain't just we ain't just wasting each other's time out here, y'all. We learning something. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. man. Yo, Rome, what's your thoughts on it, bro? Now that you know that, because that's something I, I didn't think about. Did you think about that? Um, I'm actually trying to look to see what it exactly Oh, he's at the very bottom. Antonio at the very bottom. Like, he's the line, last line that dropped in the chat. Oh, you, you see it. okay. Yeah. yeah, he said, what did he say? Uh, play steady on play your steady phone. If you don't have if you, he, yeah, he, yep. Um, yeah. So, like, basically, if your power goes out, the LTE, I guess, I think it's, I think, yeah, like 5G and LTE, uh, LTE connections and stuff like that, I think they will be working. But say, see, I don't use, see, that's my thing. Is, see now I feel like I gotta be forced to do something if the power does go out or whatever. I don't want to play on the phone, but if it's the last resort, I guess I could. So it's options there. So what's your thoughts? Right. I think you know what I actually try to play um, on mobile internet um, like LTE and mm -hmm. it, it, it's 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 not to me it's not in my area. Uh, so I I, uh, I struggle maintaining a good smooth connection. Um, yeah. that, that, you know that's what that was my experience when I tried out the. Uh, the uh, X Cloud, but uh, I also wanted to say um, it's just it's not only the variables when it come down to power. And you know what? Let me let me say this real quick before I go forward. I, I want to know ashes to ashes internet and Antonio's internet. I wish I could have their internet because <laughs> for them they have it seem like they have some very reliable, stable internet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's vi and and I, I could only wish for that. And I and you know what's funny? I have, um, I have, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, you just said it. Uh, the internet you got. The, um, uh, well, I have Verizon. Um, oh, you got Verizon. Oh, you got. Yeah, Verizon. I have. A, uh, I have a gig, gigabit up and down. Sorry, gigabit. I'm trying to eat dinner, but you know I gotta eat too. But uh, go ahead. Oh wow, yeah, you. Oh, your internet better than mine. So I got um, what's the tier below that one? I came for some reason. I'm drawing blanks here. Uh. Um, who you, I don't know who your brand, who who it is. I got you know, AT&T. So, oh, oh, fiber. Okay. So I got fiber. Yeah, fiber. All right. Yeah, and fiber is it's fast. Don't get me wrong. When it works, it works. But um, for some reason, it seemed like because I and I pull a lot of internet between me and my family. We pulling tons of internet because we are streaming and gaming on it. And I feel like AT&T throttles me. I do feel like that, and I feel like if if I'm dealing with throttle and T, which I believe I'm dealing with, I don't feel like I have a, a smooth experience every time I, I get on the game, and uh, especially like you know streaming and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I can dig, I can dig, mm -hmm. because even though I do have a gig up and down, it doesn't matter because Shadow 
Shadow PC, their internet that they provide to you as a customer. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need to say you got 50 up, 50 down or something like that, for example. Mm -hmm. Then you subscribe to Shadow for $12 a month or whatever, right? You get access to a full PC that you can do work on for your business or for work or whatever. And you can game now. And you can game. And it gives you a gig up. And I'm talking about a solid gig. When you run that speed test, y'all, mm -hmm. you're gonna see 900 and something that um, um download speed, maybe even a thousand. It was my first time seeing like a thousand and fifteen download speed. And then they give you 150 up, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you're gonna see like the majority of that. Uh, you're gonna see like maybe 150 on the speed. I mean 145 on the speed test, or 140 on the speed test when it comes to upload speed. Mm -hmm. So. That is it's crazy and it's so convenient. And it's, it's a, there's a reason why these companies are moving towards that, man. So I'm glad y'all are not like so closed minded and biased that you won't even consider the cloud gaming movement that's happening, like some people. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, I noticed it too, but you remember I was telling you I only got Comcast down here. There's nothing mm -hmm. else besides Comcast and HughesNet in my area. And I know yeah. for a fact Comcast throttles me. Mm hmm. I, I know yeah. when they throttling me. Verizon claims they don't, but man, I, if I run a speed test and I'm not seeing high eights or, or low nines, then something's going on. So you can say, they can say what they want to say. And, and, it, and it has been pretty reliable since I upgraded to my Cat 8 and um, Ethernet cables and all that stuff. It has been kind of like more reliable for some magical reason, but I had them come out and replace everything at my house. The whole, the, the old, the, whatever the box is outside of the crib or whatever, they replaced everything. They replaced the wire in the ground because I was having issues, like like Rome said. So, I, while Bunny might have a, and see, this is what this is what just outright just pisses me off right here because Bunny can stream, she could be playing her game. Now she was laughing about this too. I said, Bunny, you could stream and on two different Twitch and YouTube, play your game, everything clear, and I'm up here sometimes, and I, and I and like, say I could play, if I tried to play Stadia in my Chrome browser, it would get a little bit fuzzy. It would, it would, it would say, like, you know, like, the connection quality wasn't always excellent. It would downgrade to, like, orange or red. And I'm just mm. keeping it factual, y'all. Well, I appreciate it's, it. It's, it's, not a, it's not a secret. It's well-known, documented that. The CCU though, the Chromecast Ultra kicks ass, hands down. If you're plugging Ethernet, if you're playing Stadia via Ethernet cable, man, it's it's just it's a wrap. Like nothing else compares. Shadow, GeForce Now, none of that stuff, man. X Cloud, none of it compares to what Stadia is doing. Hmm. You know so. And That's I'm cool, on man. like the lowest internet speed with Comcast. Because I never upgraded it because I was, you know, playing, um, I wasn't playing it on streaming and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm on, like, the lowest thing possible. Right. Yeah. You know what GeForce I want to Now cuts out, too. I just wanted to throw that out there. GeForce oh. Now cut out on me a couple times, Hyperscape, with Hyperscape, man, playing that. The game crashed, like, four or five times. I can't, it's unplayable for me. I can't even keep a consistent connection, but... Again, once I had Stadia working with the CCU and connected through through uh, Ethernet cable, man, no problems. But go yeah. ahead, no, I'm sorry. Oh no, no, I was just gonna say, I think, I think, despite the connection issues, I think the absolute biggest issue for me when it comes to streaming uh, my games is um, paying for access. Whether it's paying for access through the company, the gaming company, or I'm paying for access through the internet company. Um, that is like one of the biggest things that I, I don't, you know, want to have to experience, you know, if, if, if I have to pay for access to, uh, content, then, um, I'm kind of turned off by it. But that's, like I said, that's me and I'm not trying to, you know, put anybody else into that, yeah. you know, bubble or anything like that. I totally get like the convenience of it and the flexibility of game streaming you know being able to pull out your phone and connect it to a controller and play i get it it's a it's a great selling point it's just for me as a gamer it, it won't work for me you know, old consoles bro like i'm still gaming on ps3 and 360 so that right that, that gives you nothing you wrong idea. with it you're right yeah that give you idea like i'm just i'm, I'm so hell bent on hardware and ownership you know yep yeah 
all right so that boils down to your style is you like to have your physical you mm -hmm. you want to if you're paying this money you gotta have it you gotta hold it you want to mm -hmm. cradle it mm -hmm. um storm you're the convenience factor I don't have to yep. change out anything I can play yep. it anywhere I could yep. be out at doctor's yep. office I could do this I could do that there you go yeah, ain't that okay. something ain't, ain't it beautiful though ain't it beautiful y'all okay and then, conversation like this. Yeah, and that, then me it, and then like with me it's okay I like to have my physical I'll get whatever digital I can get but I like the fact that I can play it on my TV or I can pick it up and play it laying in my bed if I want to lay in my bed and play. Okay, right. for me, it's not like I, I don't get stuck on the hardware type for the most part. For right. me, it's I like having my physical because I can't see value paying 60 bucks for a digital game when I can get it physical for, for 60 bucks. Yeah. Now, if they made it so that they dropped the price of digital, physical would go out of style with probably everybody. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. like if you go into Walmart and buy a game, if you want, if you want physical games and you want to go to Walmart, go to Walmart. My Walmart normally charges ten bucks less for Switch games brand new coming out the, or opening day. Yep. Right. For physical yep. games, the digital games are still sixty. So that's how our styles are. Rome, you want your physical. You want to hold it, cradle it, things like that. Um storm you just want to play whatever whenever however you want to play yeah. it me yeah. i like to have my option of playing it on tv playing it in bed i would get physical if i could get physical if digital is cheaper i'm willing to buy it digital <laughs> i mean that's how i look at it um also like when we get down to styles of games Storm, you play a lot of first. You like playing a lot of first-person games. You play sports games. You play some of everything. Some of everything. You every can play. Time. You can play every type of game that's out there. Yep. Storm, yeah. um, Rome, you can play. You love your your forte is you love sports games. Mm -hmm. Um, that's like the number one thing. Like if a sports game was coming out on this platform that you wanted to play, but it wasn't coming out on this other platform, nine times I tell you, you probably would buy the platform that it's coming out on just so that you could play the game. <laughs> I would. If I had to get Stadia for for Madden, I, or, or something like that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but do you hey, clip that? Clip that. Okay. No, but but. Okay. Hey, wrong. Hey, wrong. What if Google reached out to you and said, "Hey, brother, man, I see what you're doing out there, wrong man. You know what I'm saying? Here, here, here here's a uh, free trial right here, or here, here's a game on us, or whatever, man. Would you take Ooh. on that? Would you would you go ahead and play it for at least a month, man? I would. I would. I absolutely would. Yep. yep. As a matter of fact, when it comes to sports games, since I buy them every year, which is crazy, I you know I probably wouldn't have you know it, it's like access, so I would probably have no problem playing games like Madden and stuff on Stadia. You know, I would probably I would probably invest in the Stadia if Stadia locked down 2K and Madden or something like that. If Madden gotcha. never got their act together, let's put it like because I, I I got some real beef with Madden right now. Yeah, yeah, I, get, I get where that beef is coming from, man. I had it yeah. too. I, I gave it a straight up four when I first touched it, and then it got better. I gave it a six, and then now oh, it's at right. an eight. You know, so now it's at an eight because I do like the gameplay, and I'm able to win games on my rank mode, where I, which, which I love to play. Phantom Kraken just joined us and said, Hey, at Snow Bunny, how's it going? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, Joe Hansel. How are you? You know what I'm saying? And, so but the but then. Bro. Yep. And then when it comes to me. I play whatever's fun. Yeah. I don't care what platform it's on. If it grabs my interest and I want to play That's it true. and it looks fun, guess what? I'm going to buy it on whatever platform yeah. it is and buy whatever platform it is to play it. Yeah. That's the, that's another key, too. Those games will make me forget about what I'm playing on and what I'm doing. The game is looking amazing. I'm all on it. I don't care if... If it's on a toilet seat, I'm going to play it. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, man. And it's, that's how it should be right there. That's how it should be, man, at the end of the day. Um, but, Bunny, you know, going back to the Switch talk, though, I have to go back over there. Uh, I know you thought I was going to leave it alone, but 
Uh, While I got no. you and Rome in the building, I, I got to ask. Okay. I have to ask. Now, Rome, I did go and check out that game, Katana Zero, bro. Oh, did you? Okay. Absolutely. You it looks like oh, the dopeness, man. I mean, <laughs> like, I thought it was going to be at first when I first saw it. I'm like, yo, that's still these old sprite graphics, man. Like, <laughs> right. yo, but when, I saw this, when I saw them getting it in and like the, the way they were fighting and dashing and everything, the different abilities and stuff, man, it looks cool. You know what I'm saying? Um, however, it's not enough to get me on the switch. You know what I'm saying? And, and you want me to be honest with you? I'm not even mad at you for that. Because the thing is, is it, it goes down to like I was telling Rome, everybody has a different gamer style. I'm not going to be sitting here mad that you never get a switch. If you don't want a switch, hey, you don't have to get a switch. But that's the thing. That's just your style. Right. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier. I'm not going to sit here and hate on you because you won't get a switch. Right. The fact that you're curious enough to ask the questions. Right. I'm just happy about that. But remember, I just want people to know their next gen system. If that thing is doing 4K and all that, I'm on it. Because I do want to see Link and Mario and Luigi and everybody running around with 4K textures and stuff like that, y'all. Just, you know what? I just want them to finally come out and say, look, we're Nintendo. We ain't playing around. PS5, y'all could do that. Xbox, y'all could do that. But guess what? We're in 4K and we're running games at 60 frames per second. That's all. But, see the, thing, all. but, but no. see, the thing is, is let's, let's, let's keep it 100 They got here. the money. They got the bread, man. No, they got no, the bread. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> You don't even have every game on a PS4 and Xbox One running at 60 frames per second. And those are far more powerful consoles. When you're talking about that. When no, 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 that. no. What I'm talking about is you can't hold one company at a standard of you want 60 frames per second from this one company when the other companies with more powerful hardware is not even pulling it. Hey, Ron, bail, bail me out, man. <laughs> <laughs> bail me out, man. You know, you were laughing, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> Tell me out. Man. I was actually gonna you say, Bunny. I'm gonna get her one day. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get her. You know what I'm saying? I get her. <laughs> I have never I, seen Bunny lose. I, she never <laughs> seen it, man. It could be against. It I tried to go at it three times and I lost every single one. I'm gonna get her. Trust me, I'm gonna get her. Oh, I'm gonna get her. I mean, I mean, let's let's keep it 100. Yeah, I admit. Switch got its damn issues, but you yeah. can't demand nothing of the Switch that the current gen consoles. <clears throat> can't pull you know what that's amazing that he actually brought that up project storm man i did that is the same kind of demands that i have for xbox bro and if i, I i'm telling you if they've delivered just great first party games man i would i wouldn't even trip as hard as i've been tripping on xbox bro that's so i, I, I got them, you know what i mean like i got them same kind of demands man for real yep. i believe it and yep. see me here, here now let's let's talk xbox and, and all that and ps5 the series x and ps5 y'all because i plan on getting both now at first I, I, hey after after they showed halo infinite that day at that showcase man i'm not gonna lie to you i was mad as hell i said i'm done with sony i said f i ain't gonna say it on here but i said f sony uh, f microsoft f sony F Nintendo, F Stadia, and everybody. I came at everybody. I was done with gaming after that. Because Damn. I'm up here, I'm bragging, I'm talking like, yo, Xbox is about to drop that fire. 12 teraflops, watch. I'm, I'm a PC gamer. I know what 12 teraflops can do. I know what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying for the floating point operations and stuff. Y'all better get out of here with all that if you don't know what I'm talking about. 12 teraflops is about to be running things like a, like a 2080 and possibly even a 2080 Ti. I'm up here and I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm waving the flag and, you know, so then we saw, you know, like we saw the trailer, and I don't think the trailer was that bad at 4K. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man. I thought the game looked, was solid. Like if they, if they had said to me, this game is running in a complete open environment, you have never seen this in the Halo universe. It's spanning across so many miles of terrain and stuff like that. I would have been in defense of Halo Infinite that day. I'm telling you, and, and I'm talking about from from that point on. I mean, I would have been trying to shoot down everybody I could if they was talking trash about it because I would have been like, y'all don't understand. But see, and I still don't think the game looks that bad at 4K. When I put it in 4K, I was like, yo, oh, I see where this thing could go. You, you know what I'm saying? But and I saw Ratchet and Clank, though, wrong. 
Man. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up now. Hold on. Because you know me, I'm looking in the background. I'm like, yo, I see some of these clouds. Let me look at these clouds back here. Are they going to be soft? Are they going to be checkerboarded? And stuff like that. I'm like, yo, man, this dude don't look like he moving at 60 frames per second. And I was right about that. From what from what they were saying, it was shown at 4K30, right? Was that 4K30? So then I'm like, I'm, I'm mad now, wrong. I'm like, why the hell I'm up here about to drop 500? Because I know the big boy is going to be 500. The one without the disc is probably going to be four. That's my thoughts. You know what I'm saying? That's my prediction. Yeah. I'm about to drop another five. Now, I know I'm going to get exclusive, so it's going to be worth it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Over time. But I'm like, I'm dropping 500 to go back to 30. And when I've I been up here trashing 30, I'm telling Snow Bunny that the switch is running <laughs> in 30, bro. Are you yeah, kidding that's me? True. That's true. So, so it kind of like man, it, it, it it messes with my my pride, man. That mm -hmm. these consoles still ain't gonna be locking every game at at sixty, man. Yeah, I mean they will though with like when you go to performance mode and all that. But man, they doing performance mode right now. The Switch probably mm -hmm. got a damn performance mode. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Right. Uh, actually, I know for a fact, like um, in Witcher Three, they added a performance mode for it. Mm. Yeah. So, I learned them keep the graphics the same, Bunny. Keep the graphics the same, Bunny, and just give me the games like Forza Horizon and Forza 7 and, and Gears of War and God of War and Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of, hey, that Ghost of Tsushima loads, it loads so damn fast, y'all. I can't even say it right now. It loads so fast. It's so beautiful. It's so spectacular to look at. God of War is just like, man, you can't even talk about God of War. You know what I'm saying? All these Spider Man. These games are, are phenomenal. So I don't need them to go too far with the graphics. And I know you thought you would never hear that though, Bunny, but I don't need them to go too much further with the graphics. Just 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 bump things up. Stop making these worlds so huge. These huge sandboxes and all this other stuff. Give us some some realistic games with some improved AI. The AI that can respond to what we're doing as gamers, you know what I'm saying? As the players. Give us that. And just Robin. keep it kind of like uh, give us a marginal increase and turn these but FPS up. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Do you guys think that we are outpacing technology though in consoles? Hmm. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, with what I'm learning from the uh, PS5 and Xbox series, I think so. There's a video that they, that had me convinced. I don't know if you guys saying it. It's called um, AMD Checkmate. Did y'all see that? No. Uh, no, yeah. I haven't, but I need to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, really got me convinced. I know that I've been mean, keeping in touch with, uh, 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 about the big Navi and all that, so I need to check that out. Okay. Yeah, if you, when you do, like, let me know what you think of it, man, you know, if, if you believe him, if you don't, you know, I love to know your thoughts on it. I know he got, it, he sold me on it, the power of AMD. Well, drop it, if you can, drop it in a DM or something, Definitely. or whatever, or somewhere, so I can uh, make sure I check it out. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because that's the thing that's, that's something that I've been thinking about. Have, are, are we getting to the point of where we might be outpacing technology? I swear, I hope not. Um, I don't think so, because technology has shown us that it's always evolving. You know what I mean? Like back in the day of Atari 2600, man, we never thought we'd be seeing NES graphics. And then when the NES dropped and all that, we never thought we'd be seeing Xbox graphics and, you know, 360 and, and PS3 and all that. You know what I'm saying? Then up to PS4 and now. So PC is showing us that the technology will always advance. Yeah. Like these 30, these 3000 series cars that's coming from uh, NVIDIA. They should be showing us some 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 stupid graphics and stuff like that. And and what we're see, some games already look photorealistic at times. You know, you you know, like Death Stranding and other games just look beautiful. Horizon Zero Dawn right now, they remade that for PC or they tweaked it for PC. That game looks like whoa, because I've never seen it running at 60 FPS. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, it could always be that. that Technology can always improve money is what I'm saying. Like they're just going to add more details at a greater scale, covering a greater span of uh, space. Okay. Yeah, and that's what I like about that cloud. I got to go back to the cloud because that's the promise of the cloud. cloud well, gaming. that and the fact of with cloud gaming, you don't have to worry about getting the hardware for it. Right. 
they're going to do you're, it for you on their servers. Yes. You're playing their data center and they have however many GPUs and CPUs and all that they could get to talk to each other if they wanted to. I mean, come on, man. This is just, it's, it's ridiculous, y'all. I get excited for it just to think about it because I'm not going to be stuck to one unit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm tired of being stuck to one unit. Then remember, remember when they, that one unit had the red ring of death and remember when that one uh, service went down for a whole month and then they had to give us a couple free games. I don't have to say the brands. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And remember when that one company dropped a, a, a product that was considered a failure to many of their, their gamers, their consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can go on and on and on and on and on. So we don't have to always harp on that, man. Like, they mess up sometimes, but that don't mean that we can't enjoy all of them. That's all right. Okay. Right. Now, my only, like, like my only issue is with, like, some of the companies. Like, you know, they always say third party always helps sell consoles. Also, besides first party exclusives, things like that. Third party is also the backbone of it. Mm -hmm. Is anybody else concerned about how some third parties are not going to all platforms? Yeah, I am. I mean, like, I understand the Switch because it's, it's less powerful. Mm -hmm. But there's some games that's going to Switch that's not going to other platforms. Mm -hmm. Um is that like like it's concerning me because like let's say i decide that i'm going to get rid of my switch and get another console because like i said i only keep one console because of my work schedule i don't have time to play more than one console right that, well, you know what, i hope that's <laughs> not I, go ahead bunny i try i know you i trust in you i hope that's not an excuse for you to keep on enjoying the switch ecosystem bunny I no, 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 that's not the reason. But what I'm saying is, is like, let's say if I decide to change, sadly, out of all four platforms, okay, let's take the switch out. So the three that's left, there's only one that I would have to go to if I wanted to continue playing the types of games that I like to play. Hmm. And the reason is, is because those types of games are not coming to the other platforms yet. Or they right. skip one completely. Right. I was actually going to say, I quickly said, yeah, but I, I buy it you know, and I got all the systems, so I, pro I it's not that big of a concern. I would just go to the to the platform that has the game. But if I was just, if I was like you, Bunny, and I just had a, a switch, I'd definitely be more concerned, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because yeah, yeah. that, because that's the one thing, like, um, on my other podcast, they always joke with me, oh, I'm going to buy you this, I'm going to buy you that. There's no point because the types of games I play is not on your platform. Right. And a lot of them are like third-party games. I can go into my, co my, my collection right now and probably pull out three to four third-party games that's not even on one console at all. Right. Right. Now... Go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. That was all I was gonna say. Cause I got the, okay, so let's go back to I'm gonna go back to what Rome was thinking earlier in the in the stream. So Rome, I think you hinted at I'm a paraphrase, so I think you was touching on the fact that uh something about exclusivity that bothered you or something. I remember you saying something like that because uh, now Bunny got us thinking about this third party stuff and now we know that they we we live in a time now with timed exclusives. You know, people dropping big bread to get timed exclusives, which hurts other gamers on other platforms. I think it hurts other yeah. gamers who have to sit there and wish that they had the game. And that's wow. what fuels these wars that we were talking wow. about earlier. Mm -hmm. You know what wow. I'm saying? I don't like it. I get what they're doing as a hustler. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the hustler mentality. We got to do what we got to do because, so we don't get ran over. But um, I don't like that. I wish exclusives would die, y'all. Exclusive or exclusive? I'm talking about in general. Now, here's my crazy thoughts. Now, here's my thoughts real quick. Okay. I wish they would die. Okay. Now, you can't tell me that we can't get to a time where I could play Mario on Xbox or Halo on PlayStation. Now, I know we're about, I'm about to start something, but listen, <laughs> all I'm saying is it's shifting over to this, this trend where now Sony is about to get, now they just got, um, Super Lucky's Tale, and now they're about to, like, PlayStation gamers are about to try, uh, what's the damn game, man? 
what's the game from um y'all know what i'm talking about man sunset overdrive they're about to try that game finally now and then pc is playing horizon zero dawn and death stranding now they're getting a taste of finally they're getting a uh, they're finally getting a taste of it y'all finally getting a chance to play some sony games they know god of war is going to come eventually as it ages they know spider-man is going to eventually be there now see i feel like it should die for those reasons because i think that if you i think a company should be based on a gaming company should be based on like uh who has the best software to provide and who has the best subscription plan and stuff like that i think they need to be uh competing for that kind of stuff man but when you lock these games up it kind of makes people feel like that yo now think about listen my son plays playstation he doesn't want to go to xbox because xbox doesn't have whatever playstation has and the games he likes over there and stuff man but he really wants to play these other games his friends is on on xbox but i can't buy him say i couldn't now i can but say i couldn't buy him another xbox or you know those are my thoughts y'all i mean don't think i'm crazy you know what i'm saying it's just i think it could work i think microsoft phil spencer might be trying to go in that direction y'all like with xbox as a brand being on every damn thing i ain't mad at phil i'm not mad at him for thinking that because now you're talking about millions more subscribers billion a, a billion more people with access to the xbox brand and the games and stuff man that's all i'm saying y'all um my thoughts is is exclusives okay for like timed exclusives i really don't understand or get okay because it makes the game confusing for people but if you put everything everywhere then what's the point of having three different companies i was just about to say that that's i, I know you see you gotta understand what i'm saying they would yeah. be putting subscriptions and, and other packages and stuff like that you know what i'm saying but it will no longer be a thing where you know like but those some publishers people would, they, those publishers was eat, they would eat more because now their games are going to be played on across three but, different platforms now but see i'm not one who wants to pay for a subscription for a gaming service mm -hmm. and here's the reason all right They're, i want to hear this is just my world now yeah. it's just my no, world. no 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 i'm just saying <laughs> But there's some people who think like I do. First off, um, because I used to play World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV and things like that, I had the thought that because I was paying this money a month, I had to always play it. So I kind of got addicted to playing them. So for some people with addictive personalities who think like that, that's not a good thing. I personally had a friend who thought like that and lost everything. House, job, everything. Okay, secondly, there might be some months where I'll be paying for the subscription and I'm not even playing it, so it's a waste of money. I've right. gone, like right. with my job, I've gone two to three months without even turning my Switch on because I didn't have time to play. So if a game comes into a subscription service that I really wanted to play, but I got no time to play it, the sub it leaves a subscription service. What am I paying 15, 20 bucks a month for it for? That is a hell of a flip side you just threw out there, Bunny. Cause um, I have Xbox Live Gold or whatever, and I'm like almost never on it. And it's like, man, I could have kept that money. I, I mean, yeah. it's so I'll just like straight up buy my games outright play it on the console of my choice and boom i'll play it when i have time to play it all right that's where i'm at that's yeah. where i'm at See, yeah. these are the kind of discussions we had like with the people that i be talking to man that that's so and see nobody understood where i was coming from at one point i argued so bad man i wanted to go i wanted to fly to uh to the west coast man you know we get so bad sometimes wrong where you be like man we'll roll up then you know what i'm saying yeah. see, you know what uh -huh. I mean? It, it got like that at times, y'all, where it's like, yo, drop the Addy then. You know what I mean? Drop the address right now, man. It's like, it gets like that sometimes, man, because I might say something like, yo, like, one, one, for example, one day, y'all, I said to my friend, I said, yo, man, I said, um, I like how these games are coming out for $30 now, man. Like, it kind of like attracts more people who can afford the game instead of it being 60 now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like that. Like, and I'm not just talking about early access. I'm talking about these games that's dropping at at, or, or they drop their multiplayer only modes for 30 because they know it's not a full game you know what i'm saying there's no campaign like PUBG or something right mm -hmm. so we get in a whole argument right i'm like yo 
all I'm saying is I think at that lower price point you're gonna get maybe a million or two more people that might be be seeing this as a good deal now at $29.99 I can afford that yeah I can afford it and I still have this money to left over to do what I need to do and get food or whatever like that's what I'm thinking versus saying it's 60 because some people see a $60 price tag and they run the other damn way now y'all know I ain't lying Mm -hmm. like, so I get into that. I, so I say this to him, and he's like, "No, it's stupid. It will hurt the business. It's a business. Yeah, they're, they're, they're supposed to be greedy. They're supposed to to rob you and all this stuff. That's their. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what my boy is saying to me now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Yo, you're not getting my point. What I'm saying is, these businesses do try to be consumer friendly, and consumers, they they have a voice that's powerful. If they said, man, f that, I ain't trying to hear what you're saying. They could, they can, they switch consoles. Like it ain't nothing that they, you know, they got choices. So." I said, but if you drop that game at a reasonable price, you'll bring more people into playing that game at $30. Like, you get what I'm saying, y'all? Instead of having 500,000 people who bought this game at 60, you might have 3 million that, that, that thought 30 was a good deal. Well, I got more money. I kind of feel like we got that right now because as quick as these prices fall for these games, bro, I think that uh, in a lot of ways we got it. We, we have that kind of... Uh, you know what I mean? Like a, a game drop uh, this month by November, it's almost half the price. You know what I'm saying? And I think the enthusiasts, the, the hype, the, you know, people like us, we are the ones that run out and go get these games day and date, you know, as soon as they come out. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, yeah. And then the ones who don't care as much, usually they won't go out and get it. Because I kind of feel like whatever, you know, us as just you know um spiritual beings we we can get whatever we want whenever we want that's 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 my philosophy that's what i believe you know i know it might sound a little crazy but that's just kind of how i feel no because the thing the one thing that people have to remember is us as gamers this is one thing we need to remember mm -hmm. we are the hardcore gamers are the minority right we are um once you understand that we are the minority you're going to realize why they are uh, one second guys my cat wants to help me play um but that's the one thing once you realize that hey we are the minority they're trying to pull in this uh the yep. casuals yep they're trying to pull in the people like my mom who my mom would never do anything like Game Pass or anything like that, but she saw me play Animal Crossing. She loved playing Animal Crossing. She went out and bought herself a Switch and plays nothing but Animal Crossing. <laughs> um, so they're trying to get more of the casuals in, and that's the reason, like, right now, PlayStation fans are losing their mind because PlayStation is putting their first-party games on PC, but the mm -hmm. thing is, is... They're not caring about the people who bought the 113 million consoles. They're trying to get all the PC players who don't buy consoles at all. I personally don't understand why if, if like, for example, me, uh, I, I, I just... I'm a play. I love PlayStation. I love to play on PlayStation. Um, I don't. I'll have no intentions ever to play on PC. That's just not my thing. So I don't care if PlayStation put their games, um, you know, on PC like a lot of other guys do. I can. I, but I do get the PC gamers that have PlayStations that bought a PlayStation, but they put their games on PC. I, I definitely get those. Like, I would be totally upset. You know what I mean? But until somebody, like, completely breaks it down to me, you know, I'm, and I'm talking about basically the console-only people, then um, I, I just can't, you know, I just can't yeah. understand it completely. And I did just think about what might make a little bit more sense, what might be more realistic with my ideas, cross-play and stuff like that, cross-play, cross-save, cross-generation, stuff like that might kind of alleviate my my you know just help me out with my hopes and dreams and everything man because like i said phil spencer's not hinting at stuff like this for no reason like he wants xbox to be everywhere i'm sure he does you get what i'm saying like he right. kind of sees kind of like where i'm going with this whole thing mm -hmm. like you still can have your brand but you 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 
So then come out now and design the best hardware to play it on, like the best console. And then just, you know what I mean? The developers can go out and just, hey, man, you want to go ahead and put your game on Xbox? Go ahead and just do that. You know, some mm-hmm. some of the developers, I mean, and they get that money. So they, they feel, you know, hey, man, y'all give me the contract. I can rock with y'all. But it would be good if I could put my game on Xbox and PlayStation. That's why some of them leave when they get a chance. You get what I'm saying? That's why they leave and they go third party and they, you know, because they they see what I'm seeing. Right. That's all. The only thing I can tell you is that, like the some of the things that I'm finding with this whole thing is like some companies are starting to do like the cross saves or some publishers. I truly think that boils down to the publishers. Okay. With cross saves. Okay. Um, because I can think of one or two games i can think of one game that's already on the switch and another game that's coming to the switch where they're going to have cross save with pc yeah Yeah. um so i think that boils down to not the the hardware itself i think that boils down to the publisher so like a lot a lot of i would say a lot of these third parties can choose to do that Okay. But the fact that they're not choosing to do it, like people who drop stuff on the Switch third party, everybody knows Switch doesn't have native voice chat. But Nintendo opened it up so that the third parties could implement voice chat in their game themselves. Mm-hmm. It's whether or not they choose to. Um, Civilization Six, they have cross save with PlayStation, I mean, not with PlayStation, but with Switch and with PC, but I don't think they do that for Xbox or PlayStation versions of Civilization mm-hmm. 6. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hades, the game that I showed you that you're, you thought was super cool that's coming out, Hades has stated that they're going to be doing cross-save with PC. So if you have it on PC and you have it on Switch, if you're playing it on PC, you can pick up and play where you left it out on the Switch. Mm. So it's I think that's the developers choices. But how many developers are going to actually choose to do something like that? Right. Yeah, I get what you're saying, man. The, the, I, developers get that money like when they lock up those exclusive deals. I get it. And I see what Antonio, you know how we do things, man. You know, we have real conversations, y'all, and this is no this is what we do. Mm-hmm. So um my thinking was just that, you know, it, it was just that some people love the way the PlayStation controller feels, so they won't deviate from that. They love the way the Xbox controller feels, so they won't deviate from that. But now, when we start talking about which platform is locking up exclusives and timed exclusives and stuff, now there's an issue because you can't play the game on that platform. So it's kind of wishful thinking. It was something I've always thought about that I wonder if it, hey, I wonder if it could be possible. And again, like just to just reiterate one more time. People like Phil Spencer and these developers who are trying to get finally get out of those first party exclusive deals and stuff like that to, to see their plat- see see their games flourish on other systems as well. And, but you're right, but Antonio's definitely spot on because companies would um there would be a huge loss of revenue and all that. But what I was thinking was like if they could develop the best hardware, the best possible controllers, the best prices for their services and stuff like that, and any other thing. I don't know. I'm just all about like the games. I was just thinking about the games being free, but that's all. I mean, no, I'm not even gonna harp on it no more. That's 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 just what I was thinking, man. Because it, it really it's sad because you can see Sega games. Unfortunately, they went out of you know they didn't do hardware anymore. But now Sega is on every platform. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and now you're able to play Sega games on every platform. That it's just I don't know. Those thoughts just run through my mind. But y'all go ahead though. Oh, yeah, I was actually thinking like if if we if there was like uh, you know no platform exclusivity with games, then we definitely would need three different consoles, and we can all game on one. I know that um, that I believe that Nintendo in the early years, you know, back in the eighties when they first dropped the NES, they uh, actually dominated the third party. And it forced Sega to come up with a lot of these exclusive their own games. And um, they both actually, you know, did pretty well, especially the uh, Genesis, right? But um, in, this, in the SNES days. But 
Um, I, you know, I, I think that when it comes to exclusives, I think they're necessary in all facets of business. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, if, 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 if we didn't have these exclusives, then we probably wouldn't get the best of the best experiences when it comes to gaming. All right. Well, let's talk about this then, Ron. Some people don't even buy the, some of the exclusives that we think are dope. Some people might not buy God of War. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. They'd rather right. buy an indie game. You know what I'm saying? They might buy that third party Call of Duty 2K Madden. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? GTA, mm -hmm. Red Dead. Like they that. might never touch exclusives in the first mm -hmm. place is what I was thinking. Now, some people, yeah. So now let's keep this in mind. Mm -hmm. Some exclusive titles that we think are gonna do 20 mil only does two or three. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like free that, free that up, man. Like make mm -hmm. the best hardware. I told you, put the best stuff in your console now. Focus on hardware. Yeah. And focus on the subscriptions like Game Pass. You still can have that or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Game Pass now includes every all these games. You know what I'm saying? Mario and all that, man. That, that'd be dope. I, in a dream world, that'd be dope. I'm just saying, in a dream world, that would be very dope. Yeah. I, I got a question. So in the in the in the uh with 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 no exclusives with with gaming consoles, right? Yeah. Um would you be fine with just one console? I would be fine with a console. Now the problem would be who would get that console. That ain't fair if Nintendo gets the console and nobody else has it. So that would be an issue. So this is why it's almost, I get why it's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. But damn, man, it would be sweet if somebody just came out and yeah. Or we got rid of the consoles, man. Right. Get the consoles up out of here. Now I know, I know, I'm just saying, this is just me now. Some people, <laughs> like the people that's getting ready to go to the cloud, I know the collectors don't want to hear that, man. <laughs> but but there are millions of people who are already excited about the cloud and all that stuff, so eventually it's gonna be split. So go ahead, man, but that was a good point. No, no, yeah, I, I think your point is great too, actually. Um, I, I think that it would, it would cut down a lot of, um, you know, spending for sure. Because it, it, somebody like right. me buying all the consoles, right? Bro. Buy all of that. Yeah. Imagine, sure. imagine the companies that have to that have to uh, ship these consoles, have to develop and have to pay workers to make these consoles and all that shipping and and the disc and the packages and everything else that goes with hardware shipping and all that stuff. Man, I think that's why Rome. They're going to the cloud. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, definitely. Oh, their library, their library is about to be in the cloud any damn way. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Thinking. Definitely. But then that yeah. boils, that brings up the flip side of everybody screaming about these developers. I mean, these people are losing jobs. Right, right. Uh, right. I mean, <laughs> it's never a perfect That's situation, true. is it? That's true, man. All right, so that, that it just can't happen for Project Storm. I, <laughs> it can't happen. I, I've now right there since you said that, it can't happen. That's deep. I'm gonna leave. Now that was I just thought that was I think it was heated. I hope that was a good conversation because we've had <laughs> these conversations before, man. I'm not the only one that's brought that up, believe me. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, like I said, we have all these people screaming about, well, the developers, we need to buy these games so the developers can get paid and this, that, and the other. You get ready, get up here and develop, uh, get ready to bring all the games everywhere, have cloud streaming, have cloud services. Think about all the millions of people who's gonna lose their jobs, who makes the consoles, who sell the consoles, who who mark whole marketing divisions for consoles will be gone. Yeah, yeah, and see, one day <clears throat> there won't be any consoles, y'all. <laughs> one day they won't. I'm sorry, like that's just the tra that, that's the trajectory that we're on, man. They're trying to get rid of those consoles for that reason. There's, believe it or not, I'm sure. And again, we've heard Phil Spencer talk about it. And I know, I know people might say Phil Spencer. Some people might feel like he don't know a damn thing. But Phil's been in the game for a long time. Phil's getting his millions for what or whatever he's making for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Criticism and all. Like they, they, they have these ideas. They know what's up. You know what I'm saying? We can't see it. We can't easily see it. But it doesn't mean that it's not the best thing for the industry. You know what I mean? Because the industry has to evolve. Right. I, it's just my opinion though I, I say this for sure if that day ever comes i would probably just bow out and i would probably just i'll be retro gaming you know i probably won't even i'll probably you'll call me a fossil i'll just be gaming on my old console I, man i don't believe that i you think believe you it? might put that control in your hand and you saw god of war 2 running on that bad boy and you say what no lag 
experience that. Yo, I just hope my internet. I think you'll be thinking I hope my internet and my lights, my power stays on because I'm loving this God of War too right now. You I know really what? think that's how to be. I actually think I not I, you know, and I'm on the fence about it because you just brought up a good point. I think that uh, if like games like 2K and stuff definitely would, would probably have me investing in streaming something, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it could. It, it, I'm not gonna completely write it off, but I will say that I am. Uh, I'm just not a fan I, of. And it. I ain't mad at you. You get what I'm saying? Because yo, I know people who won't. They still got a flip phone, man, or pager or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They just don't want to let them go. I'm exactly. just saying. No, I'm just saying, man. Like, yeah. I really don't know nobody with a pager, but man, people, they bring the flip phones back because of the popularity. Y'all gotta understand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, it's just. And then that <sighs> brings up another very, yeah. very valid ahead, point money. there. That brings up a very, very valid point where you're saying they're bringing back the flip phones. The very mm -hmm. valid point is history always repeats itself. Sure does. Right. If consoles yeah. all leave, guess what? They'll be back in style. Look at all the damn vinyl records coming out now. Yep. Vinyl is a big thing now. Where yep. we went for like 30 years without vinyl. Yeah. yeah. That's a true good, good point. Yeah. But that evolution had to occur for people to miss that. And now they can reappreciate it. And now they're going to, it's probably going to sell more than it did the first time because people miss it so much. Or, you know, so I get that. But I, we're, we're talking about in the sense of game development because you, Rome, you touched on it and Bunny touched on it, right? The, the ceiling is coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the graphics eventually will not. It'll get to a place where graphics, hey, man, just having a beautiful game, that'll just be the norm for every damn game. All of them will be beautiful. Then what? What separates these games? Yeah, and, and which, which is a big problem. People, are, A lot of people are tired of playing the game. They, games get knocked hard on Metacritic and stuff for being a clone of something else. Like Windbound just dropped. People say, Zelda. And now... Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It probably took a hit because of that, but it might be a great game if we try if we played it. Right. You see what I'm saying? So but, we need these games to evolve in different ways. That's what they're thinking now. Battle Royale came out for a reason, y'all. Y'all gotta pay attention, man. Battle Royale came out as a new multiplayer mode. Phenomenal. Phenomenon or whatever, because of the of the thought of just having a hundred players on screen. Now, even even though Mag had already had two hundred and fifty six players back on PS3, that was ahead of its time. You see what I'm saying? Like Mag was kind of like, it was kind of like a precursor into where we are right now. Yep. Oh, oh damn. You know what? I want to say one more thing. No problem. Uh, you got you, you guys here hip to Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, I know all about him. Cool dude. Great content. Yeah, great dude. He actually made a great video talking about game streaming. He's actually an advocate for game streaming, just like you, Project Storm, bro. Yeah. And uh, he actually uh, made a great point in the video where he said that, you know, as long as there's a market for it, these uh -huh. products won't go away. So I'm thinking like this, I guess us as the consumers, you, Snow Bunny, me, you know, if, we, if, if it's other people out there like us that, that, that get our fancies tickled in any kind of way with these companies, they'll keep coming out with these, uh, with these products. So, and... I, what I'm hoping for is that all three of these, you know, platforms exist. The the the, uh, the cloud gaming, hand uh, mobile mm -hmm. gaming, all of that stuff. Console, yeah. PC. Yeah. If all of this stuff can exist, it'd be great. And I hope that's the case. So do I, man. But it's it's all about what these companies think at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, long as we don't let them. Right. I was gonna say, long as we don't because, let them tell us what we want, and that's what yeah. we do. And exactly. I can't help but think. I can't help but think now, because some people are putting robots in their offices anyway, Bunny. Just to go back to your point, they're putting. They're starting to kind of phase out people's jobs anyway for for AI and things like that now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you know, so. I wouldn't put it past them to go ahead and say, yeah, you know what? Now we don't have to worry about these big, huge facilities that we have to manufacture these consoles and the people, the workers that we're paying millions of dollars and billions of dollars a year. We could save this money. You think those companies are not going to go for that if, a, if cloud gaming is a better solution? Because now if the infrastructure structure is there and Google and Amazon and whoever's laid it out already, it would be easy for me to pour billions, throw billions at Amazon and Google to try to get on their platform now. 
You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, y'all gotta stay yeah. with it, you know? And it, that's talk. another thing, like, like I already see it happening because that's the one thing, I don't know if anybody else knows this, but that's the one thing COVID has done. Mm -hmm. COVID has shown, like, all these food places that thought they needed to have sit down and eat in. Yes, bunny. Yeah. Man. COVID has proven that, hey, we don't need all this. I'm expecting to see a lot of businesses, like, even though we're allowed to be open and we can go in and eat some places or go in and do carry out some places are still just doing drive through only and it don't have to be doom and gloom y'all because some of those same business can run from home or you could go on now and, and, and it might be hard now i'm not saying i know everything y'all i'm not saying that people i'm people are out here losing jobs to know i'm not going into that right now no what i'm saying is if i something needs to happen for these people to start businesses up from home or whatever the case is or work from home i don't know if that's going to be the case then there has to be some kind of you know alternate plan yep but we are coming up to the two almost a two hour mark mm -hmm. um I like to keep these roughly around two hours. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Um, but I think we hit on all the topics we want to hit on. Gamer yes, diversity is leads to what type of platforms you choose and what type of games you play. Mm -hmm. I like to call them gamer styles because everybody has a different style of playing games. Um, also that same diversity is also is what's, instead of what should be bringing us together, like. The three of us have three different gaming styles, but yet here we are sitting here talking calmly about our uh, about our passion. Right. That same diversity is also what separates us because we need to get past the fact of everybody's not going to have my same thought process. Right. And your thought process is wrong because it's not what I follow. And that's one thing that all of us as gamers need to start realizing. Like, I realized it a, a while ago because I started getting, wow, you must not have anything to play just because I can't play first-person shooters or I can't play first-person view games. So I had noticed it a long time ago. Yep. Um, Rome, you're just starting, you, you, you started waking up to the fact when you got the switch and realized, hey, I was dogging the switch out, but damn, I'm having fun <laughs> with it. Right. Um, you, Storm, you get it constantly with the Stadia haters. Right. Because they can't grasp the fact, hey, I have no console, I have no this, I'm streaming everything. It's great for me. Once you understand right. your gaming style is great for you, try not to push it out on everybody else right mm. okay like i get tons of playstation people who try to convince me to get a playstation oh come join greatness my point of view i'm having greatness with the switch <laughs> it's all boiled down to your point of view mm. and once we start breaking down that barrier of gaming what you think is wrong and what i think is right once we start breaking down that barrier we're going to start getting a whole lot more of unison in gaming. True. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing, some of the things I wanted to talk about with gamer diversity and things. So one last question for both of you gentlemen. Uh, like this week, I have been playing Slay the Spire. It's a, um, it's a deck building version of a board game. What have you two gentlemen been playing this week? Man, I've been playing um, UFC 4, and I've been playing Madden. I've been playing that one, and uh, that the Switch game. Uh, Katana Zero? Katana Zero, yep, yep. Okay. Storm? I've been playing a lot of, uh, uh, you know, mixing it up a little bit, man. I, I just came off of a Orcs Must Die live stream on Stadia where I gave away a code, as you know, mm -hmm. Bunny. Mm -hmm. um, that went pretty well. It was a lot of fun. I've been playing Flight Simulator on Xbox. I mean, not on Xbox, on Game Pass um, for PC. Phenomenal game. Mind-blowing. That's right there. That 
that's one example of where cloud gaming or, or where everything is evolving like that game just is my it's crazy y'all i can't even talk about it. but i just i've been playing a whole mix of things madden i'm on my grind right now trying to get in the top 100 on that over on xbox as well um playing games on playstation you know what i mean it, it's just so much right now i'm just mixing it all up having a good time me well, too. that's all that matters. Like I said, for me, I purchased a couple new games, and I ended up purchasing Slay the Spire. I had gotten a recommendation for it, saying it was a pretty good game. I'm actually loving it because what some of you guys don't know is I play European-style board games, and some of the games are deck builder games. And mm. so it's Slay the Spire is a deck building game where you get cards, Every turn, you add a new card to your deck, and you're using the cards to battle against something. It's great. It's fun. So, and that shows three different diversities in what we were yep. playing all in the same week. Yeah, so let's ask Rome, where can we find you, good brother? Where can we find you, man? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Rome Go Large, or type in Rome Rush. And uh, my YouTube channel, Rome Rush. That's where all the shenanigans at is on on Twitter. <laughs> and <laughs> check that out. <laughs> and I put a link to Rome's YouTube channel right in the description below for this game, for this stream. Uh, Rome, I would love, I would love for you to come back again uh, when I get different topics because I'm trying to fit people with topics that I'm having. Okay. Um, I would love to have you on again one day. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming to my stream. Oh, thank and you for having me, Bunny. You're welcome. Stormy, I always see you around somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where oh, can yeah. we find you at Project Storm? Well, you can find me here on YouTube at uh, youtube.com forward slash project storm and over on twitter where i run my mouth that now i'll be out there engaging in wrong conversation and everything you know what i'm saying uh but you can find me over there at the nephophiliac and that just that's that means i always had to explain to people nephophiliac is someone who loves clouds and i love cloud gaming right now you know what I mean? so i went with that yeah i like that that's awesome and you can find me at snowbunny426 on Twitter. You can find me here on Snowboard uh, Snowbunny Gaming. And you can also find me on my other YouTube channel, which is kind of inactive right now, at snowbunny426. Thank you, everybody, for joining us to this evening. This has been a great stream. Uh, please hit the like button on your way out or hit the dislike button, whichever one you suits your fancy. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming out. We will be doing this show once a week, Sundays on Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. every Sunday. I will try to, if we're not having a show, tweet out on Twitter that there will be no show. Please subscribe if you want to get into more of this show or other things that I'm doing on my channel. I have some live playthroughs of certain odd, quirky games that most people have never heard of. That's it for this evening, everyone. Thank you. Peace have a great evening. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs>